Hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday. I am super tired. I am like burnt tired because this video has been really difficult to do. I've spent four hours trying to get this thing in the can. It's messy. It's complicated. I'm trying to distill it down as much as I possibly can. It's hard. Also, I'm just tired because I got back on the boss fight horse this weekend before this stuff came up. And so I'm just super tired. So I'm going to be as clear as I possibly can. If I stumble over words, if my pauses are very long, go easy on me, please. I think this is important to talk about. Um, hopefully you agree. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Because I will take shit for this. The minute you start talking about things like this, you take shit. You eat a lot of shit. But I think it's really important because there are things we can do on a community level to stop these things from happening, no matter what side you happen to come down on, on who you believe or don't believe. So let's start at the beginning. Who is Chris Avalon? Every time I've seen that name or heard that name before, it's Avalone, but people have pronounced it Aval Avalon, Avalon, ba, YouTube sheep. Uh, I'll, I'll stick with the pronunciation. But Chris Avalon is a storied video game writer. He was a writer on one of my favorite video games ever, Planescape Torment. He's done a bunch of other things. I bring up Planescape Torment because it shows how long he's been in the industry, right? That's like, holy shit, 20 years ago, I think. Um, but a year ago, he was accused of sexual assault after getting a woman drunk at Dragon Con. Getting a woman drunk is her version of events, granted. He claims he was just buying everybody drinks. He was buying around for everybody at the table. Um, but this happened around... It's sketchy. 2012, people assume. 2014, other people say. Like, the the encounter he agrees happened, happened in 2012, I believe. But um, that was a year ago. You know, years later, she she announces he he assaulted her after getting her drunk. Chris Avalon was in Let Go from his gigs on Dying Light 2 and a game called The Wayfarers. A year later, this weekend, he puts a rebuttal up on Medium. There was a smaller rebuttal and then a very lengthy rebuttal where he goes into um, a lot of these, uh, like, like a lot of detail. What happened from his point of view? There's a lot of speculation about the motives of the accusers. I am not going to repeat those speculations because they are speculations. I I don't, you know, why does someone lie about a guy sexually assaulting her if that's in fact what she did? Is there really a good or knowable reason for that? Like, holy crap. I'm not going to go there. Speculation, that way lies madness, I believe. He also made some comments about the role of the media and the role of the companies that fired him. But mostly, he, you know, offered evidence that calls his accuser's story into doubt, including the fact that she'd said years after the alleged incident happened that nothing like that had ever happened to her. Um, and that she referred to him as a gentleman, said she didn't remember what happened last that night, giggle, 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 right? None of these are slam dunks. Um, some people who were abused do try to laugh it off. They do try to claim it was consensual and, you know, afterward they feel very differently. That being said does call the account into question, right? I mean, this has never happened to me. Closer to the event, it's not the greatest statement to have made in public if this thing is going to court. Um, it is a situation where no one denies there was physical contact. Um, the 
stories of what happened that he said she said are mostly in alignment the only the only disagreement is whether or not the activity was consensual right the most difficult sorts of cases to determine um and we all know my really deep dislike of these things being arbitrated on Twitter. I can't stand it. I don't like Twitter callouts. I don't like, um, you know, I don't like people leaking private conversations. I don't, Twitter's for talking about politics, shit posting, funny gifts, and you know, I post science articles just cause it's robots in space. I think it's cool, right? Now, what is the appropriate way to let somebody know that someone is a predator? Well, you know, your mileage may vary. We There's just sort of a general agreement that a, that a medium that is by its very nature short form pithy quips is probably not the best place to crack that seal, right? We can start that as a starting point. Now, one could argue that, oh, she didn't have that many other options, so on and so forth. Um, she also took it to Facebook. The media picked up on it. And this is where, you know, some of the things Chris Avalon says in his response medium post are things that I find debatable. And I want to be really careful because this has clearly not been easy for a guy the guy there's a lot of emotion in the blog post which quite frankly makes me find him more credible the the repetition and the circular and and it's very emotional he seems like he's reeling this isn't somebody who spent a year crafting his story not by the way it's written um I'm just saying that as laying out sort of all the all the evidence. But he leaves his employers that fired him without any investigation, totally blameless. He understands why they did it. They had no choice, so on and so forth. And lays the fault for what happened to him directly at the feet of the media. And... Well, some members of the media did go way too far and breach professional ex uh, ethics by basically committing defamation. Um, you know, one one article, I will not repeat what one article says, um, but they went way, way too far. Uh, no, you know what? I will say it because th this is this is just, this is just totally irresponsible reporting, okay? The accusation is that they got drunk. He he assaulted her, okay? A couple other people said, yeah, he was a dirtbag to me too. It became this headline. Game writer Chris Avalone alleged to have drugged and assaulted countless women. That is not the accusation. It was booze, not drugs. And it wasn't countless. It was it was more than one, but it was not countless. And one he claims to not even been in the same continent as she was. If that is so, <laughs> that's really easily proven. You weren't on the same continent as your accuser at the time. That's pretty clean cut. Um, so I understand why the guy feels aggrieved. But to come at the media, except Kotaku, apparently, uh, who at least gave some pushback to the story. Hey, I give Kotaku shit when they're wrong. I'll give them credit when they actually did their jobs for a change. Um, but he, by his own admission, says that even the press that did reach out he didn't respond to. 
he had his reasons. I totally understand why he was not in a place to communicate with the press. But it's not fair in light of that to say what he did, which is the press didn't check. Uh, I'll start from the beginning. Well, a few, not all of the press reached out to me. I could not respond. I was in a pretty dark place. There we are. Um, so on and so forth. But for the most part, I avoided email and avoided the Internet. The press didn't check facts either, despite accuser's name, claiming their articles were further confirmation of her story. That The press has no control over what somebody does with an article, right? Um, so on and so forth. She even publicly stated that she essentially dictated her story to the journalist who interviewed her, criticizing Kotaku for being the only outlet that gave her any pushback. I should point out that some of the press didn't reach out to me at all before painting their own. And there's that thing about the article that was just bullshit. To be clear, the games press don't need to check the facts. All they need to do is report that someone said something or fall back on the word alleged. And it's a story. And so they did. And the clicks started rolling in. As soon as the press reports something like this, however, it carries the same validation as if it was researched and fact checks with no press publication to my knowledge did. Okay, all that is factual. But, and again, he's emotional, he's angry, I get it. When you're the center of a firestorm like this, it feels incredibly unfair and you feel unmoored. But the truth is, the press isn't taking the press accounts as fact instead of allegations. Third parties are. If the companies he worked for or people just bystanders, you know, court of public opinion, takes an article that says alleged, we have not substantiated these claims as fact. Th that's not how the story was presented. It's not fair to blame an article that just said, there is this allegation. This is what we know at this time. It's not fair to blame the media that reported those articles for what game companies or the public at large do with that reporting. What's supposed to happen is you report and then you follow up. And what happens is you've got someone on the record now. If their story starts changing... Or it turns out they said something different at a different time. Well, that statement against interest, it becomes very clear whether they're telling the truth or not. Not to bring up a, a, a sordid point in history, but remember the Tara Reid story against Joe Biden and the media reported it. And other people came forward after the media reported went, wait a minute, that's not what she told me here. That's that the story very quickly fell apart. And that needs to happen in the rare occasions where somebody's not telling the truth so that it backs up the accounts of people who are telling the truth. If people are telling the truth, their stories can withstand that kind of scrutiny. Yeah. And the reason I'm defending the press that Chris Avalon goes after is because now there are members of the press reporting his side and they're not going to his accusers for commentary and reporting his side. They're just reporting his side. Which, you know, if you're fact gathering, it's a gold, it's a fairly gold standard to uh, try to get other people's point of view. But again, in the case of, as he says, a few media publications, they did that. They reached out for him to, co for, hi for him to comment. He didn't. That's not their fault. And now that, he's getting some coverage that's more beneficial to his side, those reporters are getting harassed for doing the exact same thing people did on the first wave of these allegations. And this is what you do. You follow the story. You don't manufacture the story. You follow the story. Um, one of the first people out, if not if the first person out, was Eric Kane over at Forbes. Okay? And there's a damn bra ad i apologize but um eric wrote video game writer chris avalon breaks silence files libel suit against accusers okay pretty good top line we get the idea he filed a libel suit against his accusers and it goes on 
Um, he has some of the evidence that Evelyn presented that so on and so forth, yada, yada. You can read it if you want. Um, this resulted in some pretty fierce backlash against Eric Kane, who even bothered to say in the article, um, I don't know, uh, who to believe here. Uh, he actually said, um, uh, I admit, here's, here's the thing here. I admit much of the story originally flew under my radar. I did not cover the allegations of the story at the time, despite having long admired Avalon's work in the video game industry. I did not look further into it. I did not reach out for comment from anyone involved since I wasn't covering it. There didn't seem to be a need to. Talks about how he'd sworn off controversial topics. And you may not realize this, but covering controversial topics can be enormously stressful and demoralizing. And it's best not to enter the fray if you're too frayed around the edges yourself. He said that, um, stick a pin in that for what happens next. He said, um, I won't go into great depth on the backstory behind all of this. Nothing I can summarize will do a better job than simply going to the source. Avalon posted his side of the story in a blog post. Um, he posted on his Twitter thread. Barrow's allegations can be found on Twitter, though they are protected. Much more will come out when this goes to court. Um, he also said... Um, sometimes these allegations turn out to be more complicated. The messy fallout of a bad breakup or relationship gone awry. Right. Sometimes they are much more serious than that. Often the press does not do its due diligence when reporting on these issues and the result can be calamitous for people's lives, reputations, and careers. I'm reading excerpts from this article because, um, it's, it's Forbes level stuff, right? Like it's it's bloggy style. It's it's kind of breezy. Um, he summarizes by saying, and you know, I think this stuff is important. Now all we can do is wait to learn more. As always, my best suggestion is to stay out of it. Don't go on Twitter and harass or harangue anyone. Don't take sides or make bold proclamations about guilt or innocence. Let the dust settle and the chips fall where they may. Keep an open mind. The truth will out as the saying goes. Pretty middle-of-the-road reasonable stuff, right? This is what he got for his trouble. Lee Alexander of Gamers Are Dead fame, or Gamers Are Over, sorry. Oh, that simp Eric Kane who wrote the Forbes piece on Chris Avalon. You can still look up all his embarrassing pro-Gamergate articles, too. Fact check, they weren't pro-Gamergate. They were similar neutral style. Um, he's literally a right wing nut job and it's amazing that he still gets work. Forbes probably pays like $40 an article these days. LOL. It's amazing. Eric Kane can even type lucid sentences with so many Alex Jones nootropics jammed up his ass. Tweet that one at him for me. The spotty little awful has me blocked. In case you think you misunderstood that. She just called to harass a member of the media because she didn't like his reporting. And this is why I'm saying, no, let's go easy on the reporters that just stuck to the facts in the first wave. Because a guy's just doing his job in the second wave of this story, and this is what he's getting. And I can't in good conscience defend um, a guy just doing his job here and not point out that Chris Avalon, in his own statement, says, yeah, a few people in the press did contact me. I didn't respond. At least in those cases, they at least tried. So I'm not willing to say press bad on that one. I've, I've done it. I've done it in other things when I thought it was warranted, when I thought they dropped the ball. But in this case, I don't think Chris Avalon is being fair. I think he's coming at this from, one, a guy who wants to work in games again. And so he's not going to bite the proverbial hand that feeds, right? So he's going to blame the media that all game developers hate. And go, oh no, the game companies, they did nothing wrong. Because he wants a job again, right? I just, I just patently disagree with him. I do not think it is right to fire someone 
on the basis of unproven claims that happened before he started working for the company without an investigation. Now, if someone is a sexual predator, that's perfectly fine grounds to fire them. But you don't do that just based on an accusation. And I say this as somebody who has gone through the complaints process at various conventions, and boy, it ain't fun. It is not fun being a legitimate victim of harassment at assault uh, at these boozy conventions. And I wasn't believed. So I, I'm not coming at, I'm coming at this, you know, I, 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 I've been in both sides. I was fired for bullshit in jobs in the past. And, you know, there was no, there was no, um, hearing. And this is the problem with everybody cheering when it's a white, straight, cisgendered guy getting fired on simply an allegation. You'd be amazed at how often it happens to women and people of color, the euphemisms are not a team player, too much trouble, bad attitude, difficult and polarizing. A lot of the time it's because they just couldn't take the bullshit from a coworker anymore and said something. Happens all the time, nothing we can do about it, because companies, so many of them are in at-will states, they can fire you for absolutely no reason at all, and there's nothing you can do about it. So that brings us to the other side. I also know what it's like to have something bad happen, report it through the proper channels, and not be believed. And in one case, I spent two years of my life not being believed until 20 other women came forward and all of a sudden it was, oh, we were sorry for doubting you, but yeah, you're still too polarizing for us to have you back as a guest at a convention. That happened. That happened. So I totally sympathize with people who have to come forward. It sucks. It's hard. And, you know, my my experience in in these things is everybody feels like a victim. Nobody feels satisfied by the outcome um, the bad actor, whether it is the person who, you know, assaulted somebody or the person who made a false accusation, they very, very rarely take, um, responsibility for, for what they did. They very rarely own up. They play the victim because, you know, that's what led them to do it in the first place. I've had other situations where it was a boozy gaming convention, somebody got drunk, um, had a bad night for whatever reason, got very physical, got violent, um, was profusely apologetic the next day, totally owned up to it, never did it again. There was no need to escalate that. There was no need to go, you know, anywhere else with that, spread stuff, try to get them fired and like there was no need they're not going to do it again right um and the other thing i see as imperfect as chris avalone's statement is is he does admit wrongdoing he admits that the friend of the person who made the original accusation he was seeing her dating she referred to him as a as her boyfriend he says no it was never like that it was on and off it was like casual but he admits he he wasn't he wasn't nice to her he treated her badly um you know that kind of admission some people can see see he admits it no that, that treating somebody badly emotionally is not the same as assault right like but you know that level of and yes, sometimes it's performative where people get out of hot water. But again, part of the reason I don't think this statement is quite so calculated is is it it just it just goes on and on and on and it rambles and it loops around on itself and it duplicates. I mean, look at the length of this thing. Okay? Like it just keeps on going and going and going and going 
And a lot of this is duplicated. Now, Vinny says there's more to the story. I'll believe it. I'll believe you want to hear it too in the right time, in the right place for everyone to hear. Um, it, you know, short version, he believed the attacks against me were made from, were made from malice. Okay. But it took him a long way to get there. Like there's a lot of duplication here. So this doesn't seem like something that was meticulously crafted. This read like a vent to me. <laughs> you know, as we'd say in the industry, it's a good first draft, but cut it in half. Uh, that, that's, that's not making fun of the guy. That's, you know, like I said, this is a point in his favor. This, this wasn't, um, you know, he makes, he makes a point in the first, she wasn't a colleague. She wasn't my employee. I wasn't her boss and she wasn't in the games industry. And, that, and that's, those are pretty important distinctions considering what we're talking about here let's face it is um unwanted fully clothed contact kissing probably some groping whatever but over clothes that's still legally sexually assault if it's un unwarranted but you know i, I just want to be clear about what the accusation is here and this is where i want to do something really unpopular and move away from the specifics of this particular case and talk about the general boozy environments of conventions like this. And, you know, because because Chris Avalon puts a, a part in this very, very long thing, industry problems and the culture of silence, you know, um, he says when someone's been wrong, they should not have their story dismissed. These stories should be investigated as if they are true. I also believe all facts should put forth before judgment is delivered. Obviously, that doesn't happen. But, um, you know, he, he talks about this tweet she put up, uh, one where she calls him a gentleman, Another where she says, I'm always taking a bit of back because there's a screen name there, but I think the tweets are protected. So we're minimizing harassment here, but I'm always taking a little back when my fellow femme gamers nerves have story after story of abuse harassment because I just don't have my own. That's from 2014 after the thing allegedly happened. The other thing that he claims is that after he allegedly like assaulted her, she set him up with her friend, which is the one that went on to date him on and off, the one that he said she didn't treat very well. Now, people do a lot of weird things. It's fair to ask if, you know, she was really assaulted, why the hell would she set her friend up with him? It's a question he asks. I am concerned about him going down this route because I know what the talking points are in response to that and believe it or not they're not necessarily in his favor which is why you know if you're in a situation like this be very cautious with speculation but I get the sense there's a lot of evidence left to come here and so I agree with Eric Kane that we should watch and wait however let's talk about this booze stuff I've had some super fun nights drinking after conventions. Um, you know, you sit around at the bar. Somebody's always buying around back in the days of, you know, the, the corporate accounts, which don't happen as much anymore. You know, somebody from PlayStation or Xboxes, they'd buy, they'd do champagne, all that stuff. It was fun, right? It was fun. People would just shoot the shit and be people. And it was great. Because it really gave you a sense of them as people. Now, some stuff did advance beyond that into like makeout sessions and hookups. Um, I did have some guys all of a sudden stop talking to me at a bar like that when they realized that wasn't going to happen. I am not 
a fan of the Apricon hookup. That way lies madness. Now, not morally, you know, tactically, strategically. You know, your career is not worth a booty call. Um, easy to say. I'm relatively self-assured. I'm relatively okay with myself. I'm not running from that many demons these days. Um, some people are overwhelmingly lonely. They put themselves in situations, you know, on, on either side. Both men and women put themselves in situations where they are imperiling their career and or their physical safety. What used to be the appeal of these conventions before nerddom went mainstream is that these were relatively safe environments to do that. Everyone was on the same page. This is not so. It has not anymore. It has not been so since uh, I, I felt it changing around 2010. The, the, the sensibilities, the sentiments, the expectations um, really started changing around then. And I've seen too many of these sorts of stories happen. I'm, I'm exhausted by them. It's worse when it's people I know caught up in them. Uh, and, and it kind of goes down the line sometimes. Yeah, I was a whole dirtbag. Other times, um, things were made clear at the start, what it was, what it wasn't. Somebody didn't take them seriously about those boundaries and limits, got hurt, and felt very taken advantage of. And that's the problem that in a lot of these cases, whether or not someone was clear from the beginning doesn't change that the person felt taken advantage of, right? And I want to be real careful here because I'm not telling anybody how to live their lives. I just do think we need to have a serious discussion about whether there needs to be some sort of corporate chaperoning at these events. They do it, they do it, they do it in the porn industry for the, um, for the actresses. Now, obviously, it's the other side there. They don't want guys getting the wrong idea. And, you know, it's for the women's safety. But it's also so they don't get accused of um, being hung over the next day because they're just really tired because those are grueling conventions. Um, or they don't get accused of doing drugs. They don't get accused of any of that stereotypical behavior that plague women in the adult industry because there is a chaperone there. They'd see it if they did it. And it is rigid in some of these companies, the high-end porn companies. These girls have curfews. You're in bed by 11 because you got to be up. <laughs> you got to be up at six for hair and makeup. You know, uh, a lot of these women actually go to bed earlier than that because they want that eight hours of sleep instead of just the seven. Right. But it's not unheard of. You know, maybe it's time. We'll never get this in indie, but. At the bigger studios, maybe, you know, some sort of informal buddy system or just somebody there to observe. And so when these things come up, there is someone there and that may not sound like a ton of fun, but this is what you know, back in, in the club days in LGBTQ circles where being gay was, you know, not as accepted as it is now, this is what we did then when we went out clubbing to make sure nobody got taken advantage of. Um, and, you know, because of those circles, it was often us kind of uh, the women looking out for the guys, <laughs> right? Because they were young and, and they were the ones most likely to be taken advantage of. You know, you make sure nobody gets their drinks spiked, nothing like that. But we looked out for each other. Um, and a lot of it was we were going down there so that, like, our friends could be themselves in a world that would not accept them. But 
safety was a big deal. I'm not saying this would work exactly the same way in gaming. I'm just trying to think of a way where people can have some fun and let their hair down and be a person in a an industry that you spend a lot of time alone. It can be very isolating. You know, even if you with a group of writers, there there's a point where you just have to sit down and bang out the writing. And that's very isolating. So I get why people go out and they just want to have contact with people. Again, I'm not making a moral judgment as a strategic one. But maybe we need some sort of chaperone system or buddy system or something like this. So these cases are less messy and they take less than a year plus to resolve. Um, but, you know, officially I am in watch and wait mode. He said some things that are extremely compelling. He's made some commentary about who is ultimately to blame that I disagree with, but I'm not going to fight the guy on it. You know, he has his perspective. I have mine. There's no right. There's no wrong. Um, just because somebody is accused of something bad doesn't mean they stop being a human being. And I think too often in this rush to be on the right side of something, we forget that. And that's where I'll leave this. Hopefully you you enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm really tired and it... it meandered in the middle but help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash thanks for watching and please be safe